Yeah, these Greeks uh, soon discovered that the local native Chitrali women, neither shy nor veiled. I mean, this was way before even Islam existed or Christianity. Well, um, yeah, the mountain girls, huh? Oh, they went like they just flipped right out when they saw these uh, Greeks, muscular. I'm trying to keep the mosquitoes out of the lens. Yeah, good looking, huh? Warriors. Mm -hmm. Buffed out. You ever see a Greek six pack on a on a Macedonian? Well, uh, green eyes, huh? Oh, those green eyes. Uh, chicks went berserk on that. Huh? It's that sandy hair? Hmm, so different, yeah. You know. Well, human nature, being the lusty force it is, that's why they were tugging on their balls. Uh, soon, the Greek warriors were. Mm -hmm. In the in the tall ferns and the mm -hmm, hawthorn bushes, anywhere, sandy riverbank. Mm -hmm. uh, so when Alexander signaled, <laughs> "Let's get out of here and go home," uh, well, many of his warriors they weren't all that wary and tired because they were sexually liberated. They went straight back into the arms of their free range uh, Chitrali chicks. And the direct descendants of these Greeks fucking with the Chitrali women created the Chitralis. Hunzas and uh, Kafirs. And that's why today, you see, the historical background, Chitralis have Greek features. They're short statured. They have those classical Greek noses, the green eyes, and sandy hair, because their forefathers were the Pussy whipped remnants of Alexander's troops, spaced out stra stragglers on a fun trip, absolutely liberated, sexually freed by their animals. I mean, the animistic uh, mountain women, seductive, huh? Everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Around them, yeah, uh, and that's why the Chitralis look so different than the Patans, like back in Peshawar, the Patans, you know, Kandahar, Afghanistan, Kabul, Peshawar, the Patan nation, they're huge, they're not short stature, they're like six foot four inches, it's like two meters, their eyes aren't green, they're black, they're dark, their hair's black. Nothing to do with Sandy. Sandy? She was cute. Hmm. It, look, this all happened because Aristotle, the teacher of Alexander the Great, should have given him a better map. I mean, he made it across Persia, okay, but when he hit uh, Kabul, he went too far north. I mean, the, the Khyber Pass is hard to miss. No other conqueror through history missed it. They all went down to Khyber Pass. But Alexander, oh yeah, he spaced out, huh? Yeah, no map. Well, the Greeks had never been here before. And so they crossed over the Hindu Raj straight through Chitral, what is now Chitral Town. They were on the free upper side of that. Lowry Pass area. Yeah, better map would have come in handy there. And yeah, the Greeks, they, uh, 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 with the local uh, Chitrali women, 
to produce the distinctive race. Yeah, Chitral, Hunza, Waziristani. Uh, amazingly, Kipling could pass for a blood native. Um, they both have the distinctive nose, that ancient Greek nose. Mm -hmm. they, they, they've diluted their Greek noses. That's why they're ancient. The modern ones are flattened out, no, no, no kink in it. Green eyes, sandy hair. Oh, the folk are hits a speed bump. Oh. Kind of brings Kipling back to, well, he, he flinches back into his body from a former lifetime. Uh. Well, the pilot, he skims the foothills, brings the plane low over Drosh, uh, over those stone houses of Pishtunistan, and, uh, uh oh. Kipling knows nothing about the Battle of Jhelum in 326 before the Romans, you know, that Indian yogi they called a Jew, and mm -hmm. yeah, they, ooh. Um, yeah, 23,000 troops, uh, war elephants uh, clogging the river, half dead. How did the, these ancients get off on this stuff? <sighs> Yeah, on the consequent frenzy, the sexual bacchanalia between the ancient Greeks and the mountain natives. Bacchanalia, Dionysus, it's Greek history. He's simply drifting. He's 17. Do you remember when you're, you were 17? Um, he's quivering in rare ecstasy because it feels like he's returning to his true home and he's never been here before. This is freaky. He reflects my birth in gray industrial England a sexual mishap. I bungled that Bardo Tibetan passage from death to rebirth. What a botched up rebirth. Boarding school? English boarding school? Yeah. Carol Dickens wrote all about how much fun that was at that time. Huh? Well, he feels my inner spirits are guiding me. Yeah. Uh, uh, to my true self. Hmm. In the Himalayas. Oh, amazed at this. Spectacular mountain scenery flattens his nose against the thick scratch glass. So much for the Greek nose. And uh, the twelve cedar folker wheezes, shimmies. Oh, he sees a bull uh, uh, fly off out of the wing there. Uh, shimmies barely makes it over the Lawari Pass. You, like I said, the guy's got to fly below the mountains, between mountains. He never ever gets over any mountains. It's just up one river valley. Oh, that river leads there. There's a split. Okay, hang left at that river valley. Uh, yeah, the, the Patan pilots, he's exhilarated. Oh, he smacks that National Geographic map off his lap. I don't even want to look at that anymore. I'm going in. I'm uh, eyeballing my approach from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be such a hero to the Chitralis, huh? After 32 days of no cargo, no mail, and here I come. I'm going to party tonight in Chitral. 
with my uncle and my father.